is the beauty space dying? That has been a question that has been floating around in my head for uh, a little bit now because there have been a lot of changes and a lot of shifts that we are seeing in the beauty space, not just like with companies and brands, but also with creators as well. And I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about that today. We are going to do another kind of like unfiltered opinions video. If you guys are new here, my name is Stacy. I feature unfiltered makeup opinions, honest reviews, and tutorials. If you guys like content like that, please consider hitting that subscribe button before we get into this video. If you guys are new to this channel, I do have a whole playlist for like unfiltered opinions. And most of the time, those center around unfiltered makeup opinions and like things going on within the beauty space. And I felt like this was another one of those moments where we like need to talk about what is going on in the beauty space. So I have notes that I did. I also did a poll on my community tab. I wanted to get your way in on what you think of what's going on in the beauty space. So I did have a poll. These are the results and I wanted to talk about the results. You guys give me a really good insight into what you think is happening in the beauty space and I love hearing like all your, your comments and your conversation. My like base of face, I'm actually, I have a mini of this. This is the Drunk Elephant D, D Bronzy Drops. And I like to put it on my hand and then mix it in with a little bit of my oat milk moisturizer from e.l.f. Oh. <laughs> We've seen a dramatic, like a dramatic shift in the makeup space as of late. Um, not only are we seeing many beauty brands closing, but we are also seeing creators who are kind of shifting their content a little bit. And if you guys haven't noticed, like my content has obviously shifted quite a bit as well on my channel. I mean, we still have reviews. We still have some tutorials. Actually, we're getting more into tutorial based content. And we also have this series that you guys are watching right now, which is the unfiltered makeup opinion series. I'm putting on the Juvia's Place Glow Radiance Booster. I have a video with this and you guys need to go check it out. If after you're done watching this video, go check that one out. But in that video, actually, where I used the Glow Radiance Booster from Juvia's Place, I did talk about how there are changes coming to my channel, but we've seen a dramatic shift in the makeup space in general with not only beauty brands, but also with beauty creators. I really wanted to take a moment and like sit down and talk about all the changes that I've seen in the makeup space and also share what you guys weighed in with me in the poll section on my community tab because that's really where this came from. So whether we like it or not, the beauty space is changing. And so I I actually had five options for you guys to be able to choose from. You guys can actually go see the results of that poll up on my community tab. You can still vote in it. But as of the day I'm filming this, this is what the results are. And this is this is literally verbatim what I asked in the poll. How do you feel the beauty space is changing with the following options available? You could also comment down below. But I asked, how do you feel the beauty space is changing? Are we going to see an increase in brand closures? Are we going to see an increase in beauty YouTubers either leaving the space, completely retiring, or their content is going to be changing in that regard? Are we going to see like that kind of shift? I also asked, um, is YouTube going to revert back to more tutorial-based content? Or are reviews going to still be in makeup, but really not as prominent? And then the last one was a selection of all of the above. So this is what you guys said. 13% of you said, we're going to see an increase in brands closing, makeup brands closing. 17% of you said, we're going to see an increase in beauty YouTubers leaving the space. Either they're going to completely retire or they're going to change genres or niches or whatever you want to call it. They're going to, they are making a change that something is going to happen where they either leave the beauty space or their content dramatically shifts and they go to a different niche like all together. 13% of you said that beauty is going, beauty YouTube is going to revert back to more tutorial based content. Here's the kicker 0% of you said that reviews on makeup are, will not be as prominent. They'll be more as once in a blue moon. And 0% of you voted on that one. But in a whopping 57% sweep, 
every, 57% of you said all of the above, that we're going to see an increase in brands closing, that we're going to see an increase in creators either leaving or changing their genre, that we are going to see beauty YouTube going back to tutorials, and we are going to see less makeup reviews, and they're going to be more in Once in a Blue Moon. So that is what you guys weighed in. And I thought that the insight into this was very interesting because these points that I brought up are points that I have been kind of like thinking about in the back of my brain. So let's talk about each point. Point number one, we're going to continually, we're going to continually see beauty brands closing. Um, this point came across when I actually found out that Beauty Bakery is closing and Beauty Bakery was actually founded in, I want to say 2010, 2011. And they were one of the first brands that was known to be more inclusive because the founder of the brand was woman and she was also a woman of color. So it was a very, it was a woman owned brand. So in my notes, cause I have a collective collective thing of notes. I put the beauty industry began to really boom in 2016 and 2017 with the rise of the makeup influence in the YouTube space as well as it trickling into the Instagram space. Instagram became a huge platform for beauty influencers because they would do a lot of photographs at the time. Instagram was huge when it's with like photographs but they would do a lot of photographs and they would do swatch photographs and they would do close-up photographs and like it was a very good place for you to be able to go on Instagram at that time because there weren't a lot of video but it was a lot of picture photographic content. This was back before TikTok. This was back before short form content and long form content was very very popular in 2016 and in 2017 and kind of like as it's moved forward obviously it's in, it's it hasn't like grown but back when the beauty boom happened in about 2016 we were seeing several beauty influencers on YouTube who started out as just writers bloggers in this space some good examples of that would be like Jen Phelps and Samantha March Jen Phelps actually started as a beauty blogger she wrote and then she had an Instagram where she would post pictures of her swatches and like her comparisons. And then she actually started doing more long form content. You have Samantha March who has been a blogger since the early, like I want to say the 2010s, early 2010s. And she trickled on into YouTube as well. And she has actually shifted her channel. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But they all started out... Some, some people actually started out as beauty bloggers and they transitioned into YouTube long form content. And we also saw numerous brands that hit the market during this time frame. So I have a list here of a bunch of beauty brands that have really opened up and I have 14 that I really wanted to kind of highlight on, but there have been so many more. And if you think about it, 14 brands since 2017, so in the past seven years, that's two brands per year on top of the brands that are already in existence. But that's like if you average it out, that's not actually like how many brands actually launched within the last seven years, like per year. So just kind of doing the math here. In that time frame, when the beauty boomed, we saw brands opening like Fenty by Rihanna. We saw Kaja Beauty, Kosas, Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez, Tower 28 Beauty, Oma Beauty, uh, One Size, Persona Cosmetics, Patrick Ta Beauty, Give Beauty, House Labs by Lady Gaga. Unearthly Cosmetics, they're an independently owned makeup brand. Gourmand Girls, which is also an independently owned makeup brand. And Toddy Beauty. Those are just to name a few. And some people on this list are actually closed now. If you think about it from, let's say it started in 2017 to the current age that we we're in, 2024, that's a seven year boom. Seven year bad luck, seven year good luck. I don't know. But the beauty boom was honestly, I feel like it was very short lived because we saw a lot of. OG brands either shutting their doors or they were filing bankruptcy or they were actually just having like financial hardship that it was published about with their financial hardship and that has happened as of recently. So what have we seen as of recent within the past couple of years? I would say from like I want to say 2022 to current. So when we started leaving the COVID sale market, when we started leaving and we were post-COVID, a lot of things started happening in the makeup space or right around COVID time that the beauty community drastically started shifting. One thing to note, one big brand to note, 
from this boot, like from this like boom, and then all of a sudden the beauty space started drastically changing and brands started closing down would be Revlon. And Revlon is one of the legit original cosmetic companies. Revlon was actually founded in March of like 1932. It started in the 1930s and we saw that they actually were declaring bankruptcy in June of 2022 and they finished their bankruptcy proceedings in May of 2023, so about a year after that, so a year ago as we're filming this. And with that bankruptcy, they ended up not closing down the business, but they ended up emerging from it with new CEO and a new board of directors. So they did a whole like restructuring thing with Revlon. And Revlon's been around since the 1930s. Like they're one of the original like makeup brands that has been around for almost 100 years now. And let's not, let's not forget Morphe. Uh, obviously Morphe, if you guys haven't heard about Morphe, Morphe was around in the early like 2010s. I want to say they started getting a lot of popularity in the early 2010s. A lot of beauty YouTubers, once they started taking to long form content on YouTube, they were promoting Morphe like crazy and Morphe ended up filing chapter 11 bankruptcy. I'm not going to get into the whole Morphe bankruptcy situation. Just the simple fact that they were a very well-known brand in the beauty space and they filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They're actually still going through bankruptcy proceedings right now because there's a lot of dirt in that bankruptcy. And there's some creators who have actually covered everything with that controversy in general with their like Chapter 11. So definitely if you're if you're curious about that, go check it out. But they're still in bankruptcy. The company is still creating product, they're still releasing product, but they have actually closed down a lot of their sister brands, one of them being Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. That was closed, actually, it was announced earlier this year in 2024 that Jaclyn Hill was going to be no more, and her brand is completely shut down, closed down, The like, you can't buy from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics anymore, and as of December 2023, Morphe had actually closed down all of their standalone stores as well without any notice to their employees, and that was a big shock as well. Now, we also, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video and what prompted this, Beauty Bakery just announced that they will be closing. They're pretty much not doing like a going out of business sale. They're, they're done. They are done. They actually started in 2010, and as of March of 2024, the brand is no more. Um, BH Cosmetics. BH Cosmetics, I actually have to do a little bit more research about when they were officially founded, but they actually filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I believe it was in 2022 or 2021. It was a couple years ago, and they were actually bought out by Makeup Revolution, which brings me to Makeup Revolution. Makeup Revolution actually was published for having some financial hardship after they bought BH Cosmetics, and nothing has really come to light of that. A lot of people were speculating that they may be heading towards bankruptcy as well, but I also wanted to mention that like there was some financial difficulty after they bought BH Cosmetics. Like They were having a lot of financial difficulty. And on that note, Makeup Revolution does own BH Cosmetics, but BH Cosmetics really hasn't been seen in the beauty space. Like, hardly at all. So um they did I think they had like one launch post being being bought out by Makeup Revolution and it didn't go over very well. It wasn't a very good collection is what I remember what I recall. And we haven't really heard from them much. Um another brand would be Becca Cosmetics. The brand was actually completely shut down. Some of their staple products like their eye brightening concealer and their champagne pop highlighter that was in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill was actually added to the Smashbox collection. And then we also saw Kylie Cosmetics. They didn't do like a complete like shutdown, but they were bought out and they were actually under Seed Beauty and then they were bought out by Cody and they had a complete restructuring and rebranding in 2020. Um, and so Kylie Cosmetics underwent a huge, like they hadn't been launched for very long and then she underwent like a huge issue as well. So I got this new pink powder from LA Girl, and we're actually going to try this as we finish talking about some of the brands that have closed down in the wake of, like, the beauty space changing in general. Um, another brand to note would be 
Makeup Geek. Makeup Geek actually closed down and that was one of the first like influencer brands and it was founded by Marlena Stell and she specialized in like single shadows. She didn't really sell a lot of like palettes like together. I guess she did like she did a lot of curations like she did one with Manny MUA and Kathleen Lights. Makeup Geek shut down. I believe that was in like 2020 or 2021 and that was in the wake of like a whole bunch of like economical hardship and then we've also seen some other things come to light from that but Makeup Geek shut down. They were one of the original uh like influencer brands like Marlena Stell was one of the original like big influencer names and then Tati Beauty which I wanted to mention that one as well even though it like that was more toward like a legal side of things we at, at least from what we've been led to believe and I'm not making any kind of assumptions but we know that Tati Beauty closed down because of some of the legal proceedings that Tati Westbrook is going through and Tati Beauty had to be shut down so there have been I mean these are just to name a few brands but there have been a lot of brands like in the mix that have had financial hardship or who have been closing down and I just wanted to highlight on these ones because they kind of were forefront like Toddy Beauty and Makeup Geek were two influencer founded brands and they ended up shutting down and I just wanted to make note of those two brands because that's a pretty monumental thing to happen when we have just this huge makeup room and influencers are also creating their brands and celebrities are creating brands and then all of a sudden they're just like shutting down and <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on with that. So with trends in the beauty market, we have also seen trends shift in the makeup and beauty creator space. So not only were we seeing like a boom in, in makeup brands, but we were seeing like a different type of makeup space like here on, on YouTube. I'm using the iconic London prep set glow. I'm just going to spray a little bit of this and then we're going to put bronzer on. Ooh, this is so pretty. And it's actually like very like luminous. So we're going to let my face set for a minute. So not only do you have YouTube as a form of content, short or long form, we now have Instagram reels, we have TikTok shorts, we have YouTube shorts, we have a lot of short form content. New beauty influencers are actually emerging daily from TikTok specifically because they're becoming more TikTok famous and the TikTok algorithm is a little bit different. So we've seen a lot more shift to short form content as opposed to long form content and a lot of creators on the YouTube space have been trying to adapt to that as well. New beauty influencers, like I said, they're coming out daily and it feels like there are several now on any platform. Like there are several influencers on the beauty, in the beauty space, like on several platforms that are like viral on that specific platform. Um, in a space where more, where there used to be it influencers, We've seen a widespread increase in general in makeup and beauty creators. So we've seen a lot of people come to the space, myself included, becoming like beauty influencers. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing and it's not necessarily a good thing either. It's just that, that it's been happening a lot. But with the boom in new content creators, we've seen an oversaturation in the makeup beauty space. Across many niches, we we've actually seen that. And I mean, if you want me to get into that about different niches, let me know and I can make an unfiltered video about that as well. Because we have all of these platforms, all of these beauty influencers going viral on so many different platforms, it has made it that much harder for people to find your content. So a lot of creators have been shifting their content as well. It has been such a dramatic shift in content in general, especially on the YouTube space, because YouTube used to be the only place where you could actually get monetized and make a living from being a creator. With that being said, we have seen creators either stop posting altogether or leaving, or they're drastically changing their content. So this brings me to point number two. We're going to see an increase in beauty YouTubers either leaving the space, either completely retiring or they're changing genres or they're doing hybrid, that sort of thing. And this brings me to a list of creators that we have seen that were have been on the platform for quite a while and all of a sudden their content has started like shifting or we we had some we had some really like up and coming YouTubers who all of a sudden they're not on the platform anymore at all, like they've completely left the beauty space. And I wanted to highlight this because it's it's a good example of things I feel like we are still going to continually see in the makeup space as we move forward. So some great examples of this are 
Taylor Wynn. She was most exclusively beauty content. And then she actually transitioned into nomad life content. She was actually just trying to figure out life. But most of her content started revolving mostly around nomad life, like day in the life vlogs. And she drastically shifted away from the beauty space where she wasn't doing a lot of beauty dedicated videos anymore. Like every once in a while she would do a haul and it would be like, oh, this is what I'm using while I'm traveling, that sort of thing. But this was a content creator who went from the Foundation Friday series on YouTube to rarely posting about beauty at all. And now on her makeup channel, her makeup channel, now on her channel, she's actually stationary. So she's not necessarily doing a nomad life vlog anymore, but her channel has still stayed in that transition mode where it's not 100% beauty. Yes, she still has some beauty content on there, but she's actually featuring more lifestyle content. Um, Whereas before on her channel, we didn't really see a lot of lifestyle content from her. We saw a little bit of it, but it wasn't as prominent as what it is now. And that shift took place right around COVID. Another creator to point out would be Rach Loves. Rach Loves has over a million subscribers on the platform. She has been doing YouTube since like 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. I actually went back and looked at some of her beauty videos and they were so cute. Like it, ma it made me feel nostalgic for like 2011 content because it was back when you actually couldn't make money on YouTube. It was just like hobbies for a lot of people. But she was one of the original, original people in the YouTube space who was actually utilizing YouTube and was creating YouTube content way before you could actually like make money on YouTube. And Rach Loves was that creator. Um, she has grown to like 1.5 million followers between her two channels. I think she's almost at 2 million now. And her content used to mainly focus on beauty, like beauty tips, beauty hacks. She would do the buy or buy series. So like what's good across an entire brand. She would tell you if it's a, a buy it, like purchase it or bye bye, like say goodbye to it. She used to do beauty dupes where she would split her face in half. I, I mentioned this in my dupes video, my dupe culture video, the last video that I posted about on my channel. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But she used to do a lot of dupe videos where she would stack them up against each other side by side and you would actually be able to see if the dupes that people were like saying were good were actually as good as what they were and these weren't like blatantly obvious dupes these were like you know unseen dupes that all of a sudden somebody stumbled upon them so it wasn't really uh like in neon letters type of dupe it was definitely more one of those things where like she would find or hear about a product from somebody else that it was a dupe for a high-end product. The packaging didn't look the same. Sometimes the colors didn't look exactly the same. And she would put them to the test on her channel and she would split her face down the middle. And she would do a lot of content like that as well. And now she has transitioned into where she barely does any ba any makeup content at all. The last beauty video that she actually did was for the Sephora sale. And like, uh, don't get me wrong, I love the Sephora sale as much as anybody. Um, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, but that was the last video that she actually posted about because she was trying out some different beauty products that were available at Sephora. So she wanted to share, like, her findings with the Sephora stuff that she had tried. So, like, stuff that you should buy, stuff that you shouldn't buy. But as of late, her channel has more focused on content that centers around viral TikTok hacks, testing them out, or Instagram ads made me buy it, or uh, TikTok shop made me buy it, and it's like something that's like advertised to her. And she definitely started transitioning her content more to be along the lines of like testing out viral products so you don't have to. And like I said, she does not do a lot of like beauty content anymore she I barely see any beauty content come from her from her channel as much as what it used to every once in a while she will try like in relation to beauty she will try like viral stuff that you know youtube or tiktok like interested her in but I haven't seen her do like a buy or buy video in so so long or like a makeup tutorial or anything like that like she used to do a whole bunch of like testing new makeup and I haven't seen her do that in like forever Another really good example would be, and I mentioned her earlier in this video, Samantha March. She used to do 
a lot of beauty content and she's actually shifted her dynamic for her channel in the recent probably over the past year it's become a lot more lifestyle her channel has become more lifestyle and it has become less about makeup like she still does makeup content and she still will do like ranking videos every once in a while but her channel used to be more about the ranking of the of the product and like giving really good in-depth reviews about beauty content and she said that she just became very overwhelmed with the like beauty stuff that she was getting in and she just wants something a little bit more simple which is understandable because the makeup space is very 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 overwhelming at times especially if you're receiving a whole bunch of product in for PR so now her channel has shifted more to lifestyle videos her channel has shifted more to content that is centered on like enhancing your everyday life she'll do get readies with me where she's being a little bit more real with her followers and she will just sit down and she'll just talk in her get readies with me and like I said she's doing a lot more like lifestyle content instead of like makeup content but she used to solely focus on makeup as well and her her channel in the recent year and a half I want to say has completely and drastically changed so these are just some examples of creators. There are probably a lot more creators out there, ones that I haven't heard of before. And these were just ones that I follow that I noticed that their content has drastically changed. And it's not a bad thing that their content is changing, but it's also showing that the makeup space is changing in general. So this brings me to points three and four, technically. Beauty YouTube is going to revert back to more tutorial-based videos and then reviews are going to be more once in a blue moon and we're not going to see them as much and the people who who commented and who voted in that poll obviously agree with me because 57 percent of you said all of the above so all of these points you think are happening in the makeup space but i do honestly believe that tutorial based content will be coming back because we have so much new makeup on the market and it's it's different kind of makeup, different techniques with makeup to get it look more flawless, to get it to look better, like on camera and in person. And I think tutorial based YouTube is coming back. Um, so I wrote, as we've seen a shift in the beauty space with creators, we're going to see it more, I think. We're going to see more commentary based content, more podcasty type of content such as a reversion back to the old school tutorials because that is what the people are asking for. They've been craving it. Every single time I ask what kind of content are you craving on YouTube in a poll, you, I always get tutorials. I want to see a tutorial. While tutorials, they are floating around out there. They are older, much, much older. They are much older content and they are from creators that, are, that may not even exist anymore or who don't post anymore. So the algorithm is actually hiding them. And the tutorials that we have that are floating around out there are with product that may not be in existence anymore. Um, so I put makeup has changed. There's so much good makeup out there when it comes to also providing a tutorial or makeup hacks that we do need fresh content in that regard. Some makeup that we used in those old tutorials no longer exists and we need fresh content. This is why every year you see creators doing like a refresh on their everyday makeup bag or even on their like if I were to buy and start over or like if I were to recommend content like if I were to recommend product to you, if you were starting out in makeup, this is what I would recommend to you. Or if you're looking for just a drugstore makeup starter kit, this is what I would recommend to you. And that's why creators refresh that content every year because makeup is constantly changing. We're seeing things getting discontinued. We're seeing things getting added in that are really, really good. And that's why we are seeing creators who are doing that. But I feel like we're going to get a reversion back to that a little bit more because there's a lot of product on the market that is no longer available. And because tutorials on YouTube have been so outdated, those tutorials are kind of irrelevant anymore. We need fresh content. That's why we're going to see kind of a reversion back to the tutorial based content because we need fresh content. We need content that's going to include some of these newer makeup releases and we we need it now because there's a lot of makeup on the market it's very overwhelming 
and people want to be able to get your opinion on what the best makeup is. There is literally no doubt that like we are going to see a transition into more tutorial based content. I honestly, I 100% think that we're going to see a transition into tutorial based content. I'm looking for my eyeshadow because we're actually going to do a couple of different things today. Um, we're going to use some singles from Makeup Geek and then I'm going to use the Dragon Fruit Palette from Cleona. We're going to finish up what we were talking about. And Okay, so yes, we're going to see more tutorials, but what about makeup reviews? We are seeing that, you know, there are a lot of makeup reviews. There's a lot of makeup reviews still floating around in makeup land, but I truly feel like makeup reviews may become more a thing of the past because it is... Right now, we're in a makeup space where a lot of the content being created is around makeup that is being released, that is limited edition, that nobody can get their hands on once it sells out because nobody is, like, those brands aren't doing a restock. So while we see, and that's why we've seen an uptick in beauty reviews, because we are getting a lot of those collections that are 100% limited edition collections that the beauty gurus obviously are getting sent in PR and they're doing reviews on that before it becomes live on whatever brand's site. And you're going to be seeing, an, uh, uh, I personally think we're going to be seeing a transition out of like makeup reviews in general for that kind of content because people are honestly, from what I have gathered from all of you guys who view my videos and the people who engage on my videos is that you guys are kind of viewers are kind of sick of seeing limited edition makeup because they can't get their hands on it and then viewers are sick of seeing limited edition makeup included in like palette ranking videos or in like best makeup of the year because like they can't get their hands on this limited edition makeup. I've seen a lot of people across the board just saying that like they don't like this kind of content anymore and they don't like this type of FOMO mentality. They would rather see evergreen content or content on makeup that you can constantly re like repurchase at the store because they don't want limited edition makeup that they might not be able to get their hands on. That's why I put up there that reviews are going to become less and less and that tutorials are probably going to become more and more because we've seen a dramatic shift in the way that beauty YouTubers are doing things and they are trying to bring back some very old school vibes to YouTube in regards to eyeshadow palette tags in regards to like doing my face without a mirror and like those fun types of videos instead of it being so review based. Like it's, don't get me wrong, I love reviewing makeup. I love being able to give you guys an opinion on something that I have tried, but typically my makeup reviews are on product that is not limited edition. It is on product that you can purchase from every single day. I mean, that's why I created the consumer's eyeshadow palette tag, which I will try linking for you guys. But I created the consumer's eyeshadow palette tag and it had a whole plethora of questions about what I do and don't. What I'm glad I purchased, what I'm glad I didn't purchase. And also like my favorite eyeshadow palette but it's all based on palettes that were purchasable at the time I made that video, and that video was made about a year ago. That's why you've seen a lot of creators who are kind of jumping on the bandwagon of like tag videos and why we're seeing an uptick in those types of videos because people are craving the, like they want to know what they can still get their hands on and they want to know if it's good. If they see a review on a product that is old, and if they see a review on a product that is discontinued, they're not going to be very interested in that video. And that's why we've seen a dramatic, we're starting to see that shift into, again, like I said, podcasty type of content where we're making commentary and we're also seeing a shift into tutorials. So I do not receive PR personally on my channel. A lot of the products that I have received has been purchased by myself or received in like a boxy charm but obviously like I've purchased the boxy charm so like I have it. I have never actually really I've received a couple of things in like PR or as gifts but not a lot of products. So most of the time the product on my channel is like self-funded 
And there are a lot of creators out there, though, who do receive a lot of PR. And then they end up with all of this limited edition makeup that they can't use on their channel again because like you try doing a tutorial with like let's say this wasn't being restocked but you try doing a makeup tutorial with this eyeshadow palette you're only getting into that niche audience of like the people who actually purchased it and that makes your video views go down as well so that's why we're seeing a dramatic shift because if you're not getting the video views if you're not getting the watch time on youtube you don't get paid Part of the shift that we are seeing is the fact that a lot of creators are receiving product, like limited edition product, and they can only use it for like a certain amount of time on their channel simply because that product becomes um, obsolete after it's been released and sold out, especially if there isn't going to be a restock. So we have seen such a dramatic shift in the beauty space, even from COVID to present. And I actually have like a whole video about like dupe culture, dupe culture in the makeup space. And it literally just talks about the copy and paste mode that we're in with a lot of brands right now. I call it dupe culture. There has been a lot of dupe culture in the makeup space as of late, which has also resulted in a change in content as well. And we've seen a lot of creators who have been changing their content, as I mentioned before. Here is the completed look. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this unfiltered makeup opinions video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you guys can see more unfiltered content from me. That's unfiltered commentary, unfiltered makeup opinions and reviews, and makeup tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I get to see you again. Bye!